Today we're going to talk about medical school histology basics. We'll be talking about the respiratory system. Uh, we'll go all the way through the respiratory tract, showing about the cells that are there, the function of these cells along the way, uh, and the histologic um, makeup uh, of the lungs to facilitate gases exchange uh, with the environment. Thank you. Medical School Histology Basics, the Respiratory System. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University working in a veterinary school. And today we're going to talk about the respiratory system. Our objectives are to uh, look at the histologic characteristics of the components of both the conducting and the respiratory portions of the respiratory system. And to see how these characteristics allow each component to contribute to the overall function of the respiratory system. Now the function of the respiratory system is gas exchange and that's a requirement for higher animals which is what we are. You have to have oxygen from the environment and get rid of carbon dioxide and that is carried out by the respiratory system that has the gases exchange. Uh, that occurs. Oxygen diffuses out and carbon dioxide diffuses into the airspace of the alveolus. So here's the alveolus here. Here's the blood capillary coming through there. So the blood is bringing uh, uh, carbon dioxide rich uh, blood in through there and the carbon dioxide diffuses out from the blood into the airspace and oxygen is brought in by breathing in and uh, that oxygen high concentration here, it diffuses into uh, the blood space that you can see. So the respiratory system uh, has two portions. It has a conducting portion that interacts with the environment. That's how we are exposed to things by inhalation. So it's a, con a conduit that goes to the outside uh, uh, to, and then goes deep within the lungs. So you have a series of branching uh, trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, uh, all these uh, are part of the conducting portion. And then there's a respiratory portion which actually has a gaseous exchange. This is alveolus, this is the capillary, uh, carbon dioxide goes into the airspace, oxygen comes out of the airspace. So in order to facilitate gas exchange, uh, you have to have a, a, a mechanism by which you have uh, oxygen air uh, in close proximity to the blood capillaries as you see in through there. So in the wall of the air spaces, a little air blooms, you will have capillaries. So you have gases exchange. Oxygen uh, comes uh, out of the air space into the blood. The carbon dioxide gets out of the blood into the air space to be discharged. In order to do that, you have to ventilate. And there are certain mechanisms that allow us to do so. First of all, we have a thoracic cage. We have a rib cage through there, and they're attached at the backbone, as, as we can see. And between those, we have muscles, intercostal muscles. So the thoracic cage is a bony cavity uh, in which the lungs can reside and can expand. Um, and then uh, we have these muscles, and some of the muscles pull up the rib, other muscles pull down the rib. This is the uh, the internal and the external intercostal muscles. Uh, and since you have both of those go in and out, they contribute to both inspiration and expiration as they increase the size of the cavity, the bony cavity uh, that's within. Also, there's a diaphragm. Here we see a diaphragm in the dog. This would be where the lungs would be. Part of the thoracic cage had been removed here for you to see. There's a heart. And here's a diaphragm in the drawing for the human. The diaphragm only uh, is involved in inspiration of air. Uh, the, uh, the discharge of air is passive uh, by the elastic tissue that, uh, are, that is inside there. You can see the elastic tissue in the capsule uh, of the lungs. Uh, and here you can see elastic tissue, these dark things here, elastic tissue uh, in the air ducts itself. So, uh, for ventilation to occur, you have to have a cavity, you have the muscles that, uh, that expand or, or, or reduce the size of that cavity, have a diaphragm that pulls down. As a diaphragm pulls down, uh, 
it uh, changes the partial pressure inside the lungs uh, and it causes a vacuum. The lungs come in to equalize. Uh, the air comes in uh, through the conducting portion of the respiratory system to e equalize the pressure in through there. Uh, whenever the diaphragm is no longer contracted, uh, the elastic tissue, elastic components uh, uh, then uh, cause the lungs to, uh, to collapse. Now, uh, in the conducting portion of the respiratory system, it does three important things. Uh, it cleans the air. You have uh, hairs in your nose. Uh, 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 it also have turbinates in through there that uh, collects the air, uh, collects the dust in the air. It warms the air, uh, and it humidifies the air. Uh, if you've ever been jogging on a real cold day, you can feel the coolness in your lung and it kind of burns because the lungs does not like cold air. And what's happening is the conducting portion can't warm that cold air fast enough for it to get to your lung, and that's the feeling that you're seeing. It also uh, humidifies the air, and, and it has serous and mucous glands uh, uh, along the conducting portion of the respiratory system that adds fluid uh, to the air to humidify it. There's also goblet cells in the respiratory epithelium, the main epithelium, in the conducting portion. And that has an important role too. One, it detoxifies gases is one of the things it does. It also presents odors to the olfactory cells so you can smell the tulips versus the roses. And in fact, it has chemicals that washes away one smell so you can smell the next one. Uh, if you if you wanted to, also the mucus uh, secreted uh, by these cells uh, traps dust, uh, and dust gets trapped in there. As you can see, this is a uh, goblet cell. This is a ciliated cell. Ciliated cells here. You can see the cilia on the surface, and what happens is uh, the dust particles are trapped in the mucus and they're washed away, like that boat just washed away out of the respiratory system. Uh, and it goes into the digestive system, you actually swallow it. Also, that mucus is important uh, in terms of guarding against infection by the production of antibodies. All fluids of the body will be produced, will have antibodies uh, in them, all those that are secreted. Uh, and we have the uh, conducting portion of the respiratory system goes to the outside, as you see. And there's a respiratory portion, too, which has a gases exchange and they start with the respiratory bronchioles. And we see a respiratory bronchiole, we'll see these later on in more depth, uh, but they have simple columnar epithelium on the surface and they have outpocketings to the alveolus, hence respiratory bronchiole that goes to the alveolar ducts, uh, which no longer has these uh, uh, epithelial cells and smooth muscle in them. Uh, and then we have the alveolar ducts to the alveolar sacs, and then they have the alveoli, which are the individual ones. And gas exchange occurs in uh, these four components uh, that, we, that we see there for gases exchange uh, to occur. The other part is the conducting portion of the respiratory system. But in the respiratory portion, uh, here you can see this the alveolar uh, uh, area, where you have air inside and blood uh, in the blood capillary, and see the blood air barrier here. And what happens is uh, the air does not go into the blood. It's the oxygen. So you have gas exchange, not air exchange, uh, that goes in. So the carbon dioxide comes out into the airspace to be discharged, and oxygen goes into the blood uh, to be discharged uh, throughout the rest of the body. Now, also, the nose is very important uh, in terms of the respiratory function. One is you have olfactory cells that allow you to uh, to detect danger if you smell some uh, bad odor. Uh, uh, it would uh, also uh, uh, help you get your digestive juices going uh, by the smelling of food, so that that's help uh, in other body functions. It also conditions the air. Uh, it moistens the air and it cleans the air. Uh, it does that. It cleans about uh, 500 uh, cubic feet, that's about the amount of air of a small room, uh, it filters the dust out of these particles in the process because as the air goes around these turbinates, uh, it spins and the dust particles, which is heavier, gets thrown against the side and gets caught in the mucus 
uh, to be uh, washed away. Also, the, the nose uh, gives the tone, uh, the resonance uh, to, our, to our speech. Now, there uh, are different types of epithelial cells that are located in the respiratory system. <coughs> uh, one of those is stratified squamous epithelial. You may have that on, on the outside and the inside of your, of your nose, stratified squamous epithelial. You also have it. Uh, there's another type is pseudostratified clonmire epithelial ciliated and goblet cells that we see the cilia there, we see the basal bodies, the black line through there, and we call that respiratory epithelium because that lines the conducting portion of the respiratory system uh, most of the time. And then also there's simple squamous epithelium, and that's what lines uh, the respiratory portion of the respiratory system. Uh, the alveolus, alveolar ducts, uh, would have a simple squamous epithelium, uh, which is a cell that actually touches uh, the air. There is another type of epithelium. You have the olfactory epithelium, and you have multiple cells here. You can see these cells. You have support cells, and then you have these cells that actually are part of the nervous system uh, that goes up. They have like a little cilia on the surface. You can see the cilia here, and a bulb up through there uh, to detect uh, uh, to detect uh, smell. Uh, and then if you look at the locations of these things in your nose, you have stratified squamous epithelium because that's what you had uh, from, uh, from your skin, from your epidermis of your skin. It also has stratified squamous epithelium uh, on the true vocal cords. And here you can see the true vocal cord right here. There's a muscle of the vocal cord. Uh, and that is a, a, to resist uh, uh, mechanical damage because of vibrations there, you have to have stratified squamous epithelium on the surface. The rest of the portion that you have in the conducting portion is the respiratory epithelium, which is pseudostratified columnar epithelium, uh, ciliated, and goblet cells. Uh, and that's what you have in a nasal cavity. Inside the nasal cavity there, we have your turbinates are located. Uh, uh, also, uh, you have that in the conducting portion of the respiratory system. Uh, you also have it uh, in your uh, false focal cords, uh, as you see there. Uh, and, and it gives rise, when you get to the conducting bronchioles, the pseudostratified columnar goes to simple columnar ciliated cells uh, that uh, are on the, uh, on the surface here. And then uh, the other type of the simple squamous, you have in the alveolar sacs, alveolar ducts, and the alveoli is where you have those. Here we see uh, uh, olfactory epithelium on this side and that side, a bony structure here, a rich uh, uh, lamina propria there, rich vascular supply. And we can see the olfactory epithelium had no goblet cells. So the respiratory epithelium has goblet cells, but the olfactory epithelium does not. It does have glands. Uh, that discharge on its surface, a uh, Bowman's glands uh, would discharge on its surface. So if you look at a cross section uh, of your the, the, the turbinates, one, two, three, as we see here, the olfactory cells will be uh, here on the, on the top, uh, but you also have the middle and inferior uh, conchi, uh, which have, um, or turbinates is another name for them, uh, and they have respiratory epithelium. So you have olfactory epithelium and respiratory epithelium on through there. Uh, and as you see, the air comes in and it will swirl. And what happens is the air uh, spins. And as it spins, the dust particle, which is heavier, uh, gets thrown against the side and gets caught in the mucus by a centrifugal force of the air moving. Uh, is one of the ways it cleans the air. So the nose is very important in cleaning the air. It also has um, uh, it also has uh, blood vessels in through there uh, that are known as swell bodies, and that closes the airflow down from one side to the other side. If you ever had a cold and had to breathe through your mouth, uh, you know how dry your mouth would get by breathing constantly. Same thing happens to your nose. So every 30 minutes, you need to switch the airflow from one side of the nose to the other side of the nose, and that's done by the changing of the swell bodies that are located in through there. Also, there's a countercurrent flow 
and the air is going in and the blood is directing toward the opening and that uh, that um, uh, warms the air as it goes through. And here we can see uh, this is body whirls. You can see those turbinates in through there. Olfactory cells will be located in through there. Air will be swirling around through there. Dust particles get trapped in the mucus to get out. And so there'll be mucus lining all in through here. This should be, there's some blood in there. It should not be in there. Uh, and here we can see uh, the respiratory epithelium uh, on these uh, turbinates. Let's say this happened to be an animal here, um, human over here. And you can see the swell bodies. You can see the swell bodies here and here. And these swell bodies, uh, when they uh, fill up with blood, they close the airflow uh, into that one side. So you're breathing out of one side for 30 minutes and then the other side to allow it to rehumidify. If you've ever seen these sport players, they have this thing they call breathe right. I call it breathe wrong because you're not supposed to breathe out of both nostrils at the same time, but it's okay for a football game, but that's what it does. It holds your nose above the swell bodies so you're able to breathe out of both nostrils uh, at one time. It's not good for all the time. It'll be okay for a football game. Here we see olfactory epithelium and respiratory epithelium. Uh, on this side, we see the swell bodies, uh, the vasculature, rich vasculature, of the swell bodies and the olfactory epithelium uh, with the support cells and with the uh, nervous cells that I am detecting. And we also see the Bowman's glands that are located in through there. Higher mag show you those uh, Bowman's glands and some of them discharge on the surface. You see the olfactory epithelium, a rich vascular supply, but also see these nerves, big nerves that you can see here. These are nerves carrying the information from the olfactory cells uh, to the uh, to the brain. Now, uh, coming down from uh, uh, from the oral cavity, you have the esophagus. The esophagus is very important because it regulates uh, flow uh, of air down the trachea versus or down into the larynx and the trachea and the respiratory system versus uh, the digestive system. And uh, being flexible, uh, it has elastic cartilage. And you can see the elastic fibers. Uh, there's a chondrocyte sent through the elastic fibers uh, in the matrix material. But most of the uh, respiratory system has hyaline cartilage. And hyaline cartilage uh, provides flexible, flexible support to the respiratory system. Uh, it holds the airway open, uh, yet not rigidly open and it can be uh, uh, adjusted uh, somewhat, somewhat flexible. So here you see hyaline cartilage here, hyaline cartilage here. This is the uh, uh, thyroid cartilage in through, uh, in through there, uh, uh, cronchial cartilage uh, in through here. There's a true vocal cords, the false vocal cords. And if you come down here, it's a, uh, 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 epiglottis. You come on down, this is the false vocal cords and the true vocal cords in through here. What happens in the sound is the vocal cords are closed when you're talking, air blowing through there, vibrate seeds, and that's what makes the sound. But you see the hyaline cartilage uh, located here, here, and here, as opposed to elastic cartilage uh, up there in the epiglottis. If we look at the larynx, uh, we can see this is from the top going down. This is going to, uh, to the trachea. Uh, and through there, we see uh, the false vocal cords. This is the false vocal cords. Uh, and then we have the true vocal cords. Uh, and through there, which has strat uh, uh, stratified squamous epithelium, as opposed to respiratory epithelium here and here. Uh, and you'll be able to see a transition uh, between those types. You can see the transition right here from stratified squamous epithelium, protective type epithelium, uh, to the respiratory epithelium. And through there, uh, there's a muscle. Uh, which is a, a skeletal muscle because uh, you can control them. You can see glands uh, in the uh, lamina propria. And so here we see a higher mag of this region right in through there. Uh, you can see the respiratory epithelium, uh, the stratified squamous epithelium, the true vocal cords. Uh, you can see the cartilage, the uh, hyaline cartilage, the, um, uh, the muscle. Uh, uh, this is skeletal muscle that you would see, see glands and the uh, false vocal cords that you see. Another view of that, you can see that the cartilage helps hold the, uh, the, the opening open. 
uh, and you can see where it does that. And it, because, it, as I mentioned to you, it works in a vacuum, so you have to have a rigid structure uh, to hold uh, the airway open or it would collapse uh, in, the, in the vacuum. And so we see the hyaline cartilage in through there. The pericondium goes around through there. You can see um, uh, they receive ducts and glands uh, producing uh, serous and mucous secretions that will um, humidify the air. And we have uh, respiratory epithelium on the surface of the trachea. And here we see the trachea. We just see in the bottom part of the trachea, there's the esophagus here. You can see on either side, you can see uh, this is artifact in there and there, but we can see the uh, hyaline cartilage. And the hyaline cartilage between these tata is bridged by this smooth muscle. So this is a smooth muscle bridge here that can reduce uh, the size of the opening of the trachea in case you need to cough out something uh, to reduce the size of it would increase the velocity uh, of the air coming out. Uh, if you've ever been around a horse when you blow his nose, uh, you can know that you got sprayed uh, because uh, he was able to generate a, a lot of force associated with that. The respiratory epithelium, there's also elastic fibers just inside there, inside here, inside the, the respiratory epithelium. There's also glands, and we can see mucus and serous glands in there contributing to the, and this is muscle uh, here uh, of the esophagus. Yeah, here we see the, the trachea of a monkey, uh, hyaline cartilage again, uh, perichondrium, submucosal glands, uh, and you see uh, the respiratory epithelium, and note it has a very, very thick uh, basement membrane in through there, much thicker than is typical of the goblet cells, as we can see. And you see a higher mag of that, you see the ciliated cells, the goblet cells with their uh, secretions coming out, uh, the basal bodies of the cilia, the slit cilia, projecting on here, very thick uh, basement membrane, rich vascular supply, you got plasma cells in through there in the lamina propria to make antibodies against whatever your uh, antigens that are uh, being exposed by uh, breathing in uh, air. If you look at the respiratory uh, epithelium with a scan electron microscopy, you can see the ciliated cell, these are the individual cilium. Uh, in through there, you see microvilli uh, on the goblet cells, and this is a mucus secretion. Uh, of this goblet cell, you can see the secretion uh, itself. So then you got the conducting portion of the respiratory system, uh, and you have a respiratory portion. Uh, part of the conducting portion, we have uh, the bronchus. So you come from the uh, uh, from the trachea uh, to the bronchus, and here no longer do you have uh, a, a horseshoe shape. Uh, you have plates, and these are cartilage plates that we see. Uh, in the bronchus. When you lose those plates, you become a bronchioles. So this without the plates would be a bronchiole, uh, and, and this is a terminal bronchiole, uh, and then that opens to a respiratory bronchiole, and then the alveolar, because it opens up to the alveoli, and the alveolar duct, and these are alveoli located here, which is the same as these air spaces, and you would have capillaries in the wall, uh, just as we see there. So here's the pleural uh, visceral pleural that we have right up to there, pleural cavity be up in there. You have mesothelium on the surface. Uh, these are alveolar ducts in through the air as what we saw before. Uh, this is respiratory uh, bronchiole, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, alveoli. That's just as we saw before, and that's where you have uh, gases exchanged to occur. The biggest duct that uh, gases exchange to occur is a respiratory uh, bronchioles. So uh, air condition occurs in the respiratory system uh, through a series of ducts which carry uh, gases along the way is what conditioned air is is uh, modified as it goes through there, it's warmed, it's uh, moisture is added to it. The bronchus has the cartilage plates conducting uh, bronchioles, no longer have plates. Respiratory bronchiole opens out uh, into uh, uh, into uh, uh, alveoli, and then the alveolar ducts uh, open up into the alveolar sacs, and then the alveolar sacs give way to 
uh, the alveoli. Here we see the bronchus uh, here, here, and here because they have the cartilage plates. And then we have a conducting bronchiole which no longer has a plate. This is the elastic artery uh, up through there. They have macrophages. There's a nice macrophage here. You see the nucleus. You can see various size and various intensities of structures inside there. They're located in the airspace itself. So they're located in the airspace or not attached uh, to the wall. Now, in terms of the difference in the bronchus and the bronchioles, uh, the bronchus uh, has cartilage plates, as you can see there. So you came down from the trachea, which, uh, uh, that's, which has a, a, a horseshoe shape, a C-shape cartilage. That breaks down into plates for the bronchus. Uh, you also still have pseudostratified uh, respiratory epithelium with goblet cells. There's smooth muscle went through there, and also you have glands, uh, both uh, serous and mucous glands in through there, and then uh, uh, there's glands in the submucosa as well. And then when you get to the uh, bronchioles, uh, you no longer have pseudostratified, you just have a simple columnar uh, epithelium on the surface as you're through there. Uh, and you also have organized smooth muscle is still there, but no cartilage. You don't have a cartilage plate uh, as you as you did before. Now in the respiratory uh, portion, you have the terminal bronchioles, uh, which is the one that opens up into the respiratory bronchiole. And there's a certain cell in a clara cell. We don't know what they do, but they're there. They kind of bulge out. You can see ciliated cells on either side. Uh, in through there, uh, and also you can see elastic fibers. So these are elastic fibers that you see there. Uh, smooth muscle, uh, and you can see the smooth muscle uh, in these uh, um, respiratory bronchioles. In this case, it's the respiratory bronchiole, terminal bronchiole up there. The respiratory because it is uh, opening out into the, uh, and again, we can see uh, this is a surface. Uh, of the lungs, or plural cavity would be right here, mesothelium uh, on its surface, and actually there's uh, some elastic tissue uh, right in through there. Uh, and then we can see the type 1, the flattened cell, which has a gas exchange, and type 2, which actually produces surfactant. But both of those are actually part of the wall. Uh, and that's in contrast to the uh, alveolar macrophages, or the dust cells, which uh, is located in the airspace itself. And then, of course, you have rich blood vessels in through there. Capillaries were discovered in the lungs uh, because uh, uh, they didn't have, they didn't know that the blood system was a circulatory system until they located the capillaries in the lungs, which connected uh, the arteries uh, to the veins. Now, um, uh, here we see the blood air barrier. This is blood inside here. This is air, and you see how thin it is. It's very thin, and in that thin layer, we can see with this higher magnification of this box, there's two cells. You have the type 1 uh, pneumocyte, which is touching the air, uh, and then you have the endothelial cell of uh, the blood capillary. So there's three components. There's a shared basal lamina, uh, and these two cells make up the three components of the air blood barrier. You can see how thin it is. So what's in the air is going to be in your blood very soon uh, because uh, it's not uh, very much, uh, uh, it's not very thick uh, to penetrate through. And that's what we're seeing uh, in the air spaces. Uh, the walls of the air spaces have blood vessels in there. Uh, and they just have this one barrier between the two. If you take caulking, like you uh, seal all the window, and put it inside the lungs, it will show you the branching and branching and branching of the uh, the bronchus and the bronchioles that are located in through there. And you see that air goes through uh, a larger pipes and smaller pipes and smaller pipes. And you have a series of branching and branching and branching uh, that goes on with the little alveolus at the very, very end. Now, this branching and branching and branching uh, increases the surface area uh, of the lungs. And you can see these are the uh, alveoli uh, that are located here. Maybe this is a um, bronchiole that we see over there, alveolar duct, as we see here. 
but uh, by the branching and branching, you increase the surface area so that uh, your surface area for gas exchange in your lungs is the size of a tennis court. So it's a very large size for you for to have the small lungs and it's facilitated by the branching and branching and branching that uh, goes there. You see a terminal bronchiole uh, here. Uh, we can see again the type 1 pneumocyte, the flattened cell, the type 2 pneumocyte, which has, produces surfactant as opposed to the macrophages. The cells are free in through there. Uh, the, this is a respiratory bronchiole, alveolar duct, alveolar sac in through there, and then this would be an alveolus, alveoli that we see in through there. Uh, and again, we see mesothelium uh, lining it. Also, in the connective tissue, you might see mast cells. And here we see a mast cell. There's this nucleus, and there's the uh, uh, the droplets. You can see those again in the higher mag. These are the secretions, and the cell can release its granules and then produce more granules and then degranulate it again. And they're associated with uh, antibodies, which directs them to specific antigens to uh, to degranulate. We see the mast cells here, and they're located. They give uh, many local uh, bioactive substances are produced that are related to the inflammatory response, repair of tissue, and innate immunity. So they're helpful for you. Uh, they produce heparin, uh, histamine, uh, different uh, chemicals that they produce. But you need not uh, uh, confuse them with a type 2 cell. And here we see a type 2 cell here and here, and it has some granules uh, in there as well. And the type 2 cell, you see these granules are actually surfactant. Here you see a type 2 cell here, which is attached to the wall. See the white structure there? That is the, uh, is the surfactant. It's a lipid protein a substance that coats the surface. It coats the inside surface and reduces surface tension uh, uh, within the uh, alveolar surface. And here we can see one of those cells, a type 2 cell. There's a, the nucleus, uh, and you see the lamellar structures, layers here, which unfolds, lays out, uh, and covers the surface of the type 1, type 2 cells that are located uh, uh, in the uh, alveolus. Uh, and you can see the mitochondria, different organelles associated with um, with the production of these things, the RepVR, the Golgi, uh, you can see some uh, Golgi vesicles in through there, as well as mitochondria to provide energy for transport. Here we can see type 1 pneumocytes uh, here, 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 here. They have to be everywhere around so they can facilitate uh, the, uh, uh, the reduction of the surface tension uh, inside the alveolus. If you have ever closed a wet uh, plastic bag before, you know, it's hard to open you again. And the same thing happens here. The surface tension wants to keep it collapsed. If you have surfactant on the surface, then it reduces the surface tension and allow you to, um, uh, to relax. In fact, that's what happens. It reduces the surface tension to allow you to open up then. It also has some bactericidal effect. Uh, in the surfactant material. Uh, you, uh, you have a disease, a hyaline membrane disease. Uh, immature infants uh, don't make enough surfactant, uh, and so it's difficult for them to breathe because the alveolus closes, but they won't open back up. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, it is difficult uh, to breathe. Also, the fluid, uh, it, it has a cleaning action to it, has lysosomes, uh, collagenase and different things, antibodies, uh, which are useful for uh, countering bacteria uh, infection that will go. Also, macrophages are right there. They will eat up any red blood cells. You will see a macrophage right there and right there. Um, uh, they eat those up. They eat other things up, the dust particles that are in there, cleans it up. Things that go through the conducting portion is not cleaned by there. Unfortunately, asbestos is one of those things that's very, very small in size and it doesn't get cleared uh, with the conducting portion and the macrophages eat those up. Other macrophages try to eat those up and they clog up the airspace is the problem with asbestos. Another problem with airway is uh, uh, airway can be obstructed and this is a case of asthma. 
Now, asthma occurs mostly in children because they have a more sensitive airway. All of us have a sensitive airway. Our cells are sensitive. If you would aerate black pepper, it would make you sneeze. Uh, in the case of, of children, they have too sensitive an airway of a person with asthma so that the smooth muscle here <clears throat> contracts and it reduces the caliber of the air and the conducting portion of the respiratory system. And so uh, the respiratory portion never gets the fluid air because uh, it is uh, it's reduced uh, the airflow by the contraction. You take that inhalant, uh, what it causes these muscles to relax and that opens up the airway again. Other problems are pneumonia and emphysema. This is a normal lung which has the pink and the white as you can see. And in the case of pneumonia, you, uh, pneumonia what happens is uh, the wall is swollen, it's thickened, too much pink in relation to it. You also have white blood cells uh, in the surface. And the emphysema is too little pink. The walls are actually eroded away. Smoking can cause uh, emphysema. Uh, if, if, if you smoke and stop smoking, you can lose a smoker's cough. And the smoker's cough is because uh, it kills the ciliated cells that move the mucus out. Uh, uh, those cells will re regenerate. However, if you stop smoking and you have emphysema, you, these cells, uh, the walls will not be, uh, amend. And here you see a normal lung, and this is one with emphysema. The word emphysema really means too much air in the lungs. You can see how these swollen here because they don't have uh, uh, the wall partitions uh, to uh, regulate the amount of air that's in there. So uh, the big bunch of space here, but doesn't have the surface area uh, for gases exchange to occur. There are some natural defenses uh, of our respiratory system, and one of those are, are uh, hairs in your nose. You can see the hairs in through there. It traps things, uh, prevent insects from climbing in there. Uh, also, there's mucus, and the mucus uh, helps uh, trap things that go inside there. Also, they have antibodies in it. Here we see some mucus, uh, not to be handled, but you can see it there. Also, when you cough, you have a forceful expelling things that go out when you get things in the wrong pipe um, uh, and confuse your epiglottis to know where things go, uh, and it causes you to cough. Also, you have a sneeze. Sneeze remove bacteria trapped in the mucus of your nasal cavities. Sneezing travels about 100 miles an hour and removes about 100,000 bacteria. And where are they going? Right on you. Uh, is where you're going, but the point is, as there are some natural defenses of the respiratory system with the nose, with the mucus, with the with the reflexes that we have. So, in terms of the respiratory system, in a little summary, we have a conducting portion, and we have upper and lower conducting portions, and there's the different parts that are associated with them, uh, and they allow you to interact with your environment, where you get oxygen in and carbon dioxide uh, to discharge. Also, it warms the air, cleans the air, filters the air, uh, and it humidifies the air. Then you have the respiratory portion uh, where you have gases exchanged. Respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct, alveoli, um, uh, alveolar sacs, uh, and also you produce surfactant. Surfactant reduces surface tension so the alveolus can be opened up again. So you have skeletal components. Uh, you have uh, skeletal muscle in your intercostal muscles. Uh, you have cartilage, uh, mostly hyaline cartilage, but there is elastic cartilage uh, in the epiglottis um, and also rich vascularization uh, to allow you to, uh, to warm the air that is going in. And there's glands uh, in the lamina propria to facilitate a moisturing uh, of the system. So in summary, the function of the respiratory system is gas exchange. That's what it is. Uh, and so what happens is you get oxygen uh, comes out of the airspace into the blood and carbon dioxide comes out of the blood uh, into the into the airspace. We have a few questions for the respiratory system. The conducting portion of the respiratory system modifies air in the following ways. It warms the air, yes cleans the air? Yes. Dries the air? No. 
It humidifies the air. So the answer is D. Which of the following are involved in both inspiration and expiration? Contraction of Pentecostal skeletal muscle between ribs? Yes. Uh, it does both. Breathe in and breathe out. Diaphragm? No. Only breathes in. Uh, breathing out is passive. Uh, by the contraction of the, uh, of the elastic tissue. Uh, smooth muscle? No. Smooth muscle can only contract or reduce the size. It doesn't relax. It doesn't uh, expand by its contraction. Uh, so the answer is A. Uh, variation in the epithelial lining of the respiratory system facilitates varied functions, which epithelial function do not match, not match. Uh, simple squamous, alveolar ducts. Yes, you have simple squamous and alveolar, alveolar ducts, uh, and alveolar sacs. Uh, goblet cells, uh, it humidifies the air. It certainly does. Uh, stratified squamous epithelium, uh, false vocal cords. No, stratified squamous epithelium is on the true vocal cords, not the full vocal cords. Uh, that combination is not correct. That is the answer C. Ciliated cells remove dust laden mucus. True. Uh, hair follicles, uh, filter air, true. Uh, so we want to thank the many sources uh, of these, these different books uh, which contribute images uh, to this uh, presentation. Uh, all the drawings and all, I did not make any of those drawings. You know, some electron micrographs uh, came from uh, these books. We want to thank uh, Body World for that one uh, shot that we had that we viewed. Uh, so as again, I did not make any of those. All those are made by these uh, books, and we thank uh, them for their contribution to this uh, presentation. Uh, this is about in 1986 or so, where Randy Zane and I went to a national meeting. He actually won an award there for a Young Investigator Award uh, for some work that uh, he had done for me uh, in the male reproductive category. Uh, and there's me. We went to that meeting. Uh, and went out to California. While we were in California, we went to see uh, Disney World. Not Disneyland, but Disney World out in California. This is the end of Medical School Histology Basic the Respiratory System. Uh, thank you for your present, for uh, listening, uh, and I hope the presentation was useful to you. If so, please consider subscribing to VIBS uh, Histology YouTube uh, and tell your friends about it. Thank you.